Hey guys, we thought we'd go up for a little fall color tour. Um, we hemmed up 31. We got between Big Rapids, Reed City, Cadillac, and we're starting to see a lot of color. Around by us, it's maybe 10 to 20%. And when we got north of Reed City, we noticed that uh, colors are really starting to pop. It's probably about 50% or so. So we're looking for a good weekend. We're going to Mitchell State Park. We're gonna put our trailer there, set up base, grab something to eat, and probably turn in a little early tonight. And then we will look forward to doing a color tour tomorrow and heading north. We'll see what we can find. Let the adventure begin. Like little cards. Yep. Got Mr. Buddy Heater keeping us warm here in our gazelle screen room with the walls on. So it keeps the heat in. It's a perfect way to go, guys. So, what is for breakfast this morning? The tortilla boats and a side of hash browns. A little egg, sausage, and some onion, green pepper, and some cheese. Mmm, looks delicious. Mm -hmm. What flavors do we have? We have cherry, mango, and peach. We'll have to see how they are. I don't know what I'm doing. But you just say with the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the mango. Saturday night and it's raining. So we're out here in the gazelle tent. Got the light on, got the cards going. Got the little heater going and we are toasty warm in here. And it is about 35 degrees outside right now. And she's killing me in skip boo. Mm, not really. Well, that's right. I did win you the did first win hand, the first didn't I? Yeah. Is that why you're recording? To just make sure people know I that? Have to make sure people know that. At least I won one hand out of the probably two or three that we play so mm -hmm. yep well we'll see how this one turns out your turn okay we're testing the video one two three one, let's see how two, loud it is three am i talking loud enough my jacket's about to start on fire and your jacket is kind of loud good morning good morning how are you good good breakfast was awesome thanks a little breakfast sandwich, mm -hmm. get us going for the day. Some donuts left over from yesterday, warmed up on the griddle. Nothing better than fresh cider and warmed cider up. donuts mm -hmm. in the fall time. Definitely. Yep. Definitely feels like fall. So today, guys, we wanted to talk to you about cold weather gear and cold weather camping. Mm -hmm. We've got 10 things we would like to talk to you guys about, and hopefully you can take some of these and run with them. Yeah. So first off you want to make sure that you've got plenty of warm clothing 
starting with layers. So you got your base layer, a warmer layer, and then obviously a warm jacket. Um, and then if you get too warm, you can start taking layers off. Definitely want a hat because that keeps a lot of your body heat in. That's where you lose a lot of body heat. Yep. So hat and gloves. So ways to just keep that heat in. Make sure you bring plenty of layers. You never know when you get that pop-up rainstorm or a little bit of light snow or something like that and it gets really, really chilly and you wish you had that extra jacket or extra yeah. thermal layer. We actually took our winter jackets, we took our raincoats, and we've used both of them on this trip. Yeah, we have. So number two would be a good outdoor shelter. Mm -hmm. So in our case, we brought a gazelle outdoor dining canopy. Um, but for some people, it may be adding some walls to their awning that they already have. Yep. And the outdoor shelter that we have we've showed you guys many times it's the gazelle model um, it, we have a full wall system so we have six panels that we purchased mm -hmm. with the gazelle and each one can be added you can remove them for ventilation but mm -hmm. this weekend we had a lot of rain towards the latter part of this trip and this thing is completely dry inside we can fit our full picnic table yep. we can fit heaters we can have plenty of space to play cards in the evening hang lights and basically knock that wind from coming through and and ruining your time outside and keeping the rain away and keeping the rain away definitely yep so outdoor shelter is definitely needed yep and you can also do the outdoor shelter by adding walls if you have a 270 awning you can go and put your walls and deploy walls and create wind breaks that definitely is a nice way to go too so it just depends on your needs and how much money do you want to spend? <laughs> and the equipment you already have. Yep, exactly. Yep. So number three, some kind of a heater. So we've been using and bar we borrowed our friend's buddy, Mr. Buddy heater. <laughs> that has been a lifesaver. Yep. It's definitely taking the chill off. So the Mr. Heater setup has a lot of different options. They make smaller ones. They've got medium ones and really, really big ones. Mm -hmm. And each heater um, runs on two propane tanks, just the one pound tanks. You can screw them into the sides and it, it's plenty warm in here mm -hmm. um we've got it inside the gazelle right now and it gives us plenty of heat for walking around doing what we need to do we can turn it on in the evenings to play cards we can turn it on in the mornings for breakfast time yeah. and and just enjoying the space um it's amazing to me how much of a temperature difference there is being inside the shelter with this heater going and then walking outside definitely huge difference yep so it's worked really well for us so that's our heater for outdoors but inside of our trailer, we need to stay warm too. So one way to do that is to have just a small little heater. We've got a 250 volt for ours. So if you're on grid camping, guys, this small little heater was designed to sit by a computer and just warm your hands in a business atmosphere. <laughs> but a lot of hiker trailers, we stole this idea from the online forums, and they just use these little 250 volt, or 250 watt, excuse me, 250 watt uh, personal heater that's designed for just warming your hands. Now what we do is we plug this into our power strip in the back of the trailer where we have power coming in and then we set this in the middle shelf mm -hmm. and we sleep with our heads towards the rear galley. So the heat just kind of blows in just above us and it's not overwhelming, it's not too hot, that kind of thing. It's just enough to warm the space plus your body heat you can stay warm all night long. Yep. So one thing with a 250 watt heater, that is perfect um, to be able to run it off the power strip. Don't put in one of these 1500 watt, 1000 watt heaters. They're not designed for the power strip. Could potentially overload it and start a fire. That's the last thing you want to do is have your power strip melt down mm -hmm. in the middle of the night in your trailer. Sure, not good. That would not be a good situation. So being inside, we get concerned about condensation in this kind of weather so we've done multiple things to help prevent that one is to put a vent on our air conditioning prep um, to help with the air movement um, we turn our fan on low and then we have this little vent cover on there that helps pull in the air through the vent versus the windows so in the summertime we usually have our windows cracked to get the air to come through that way um, but by having this vent we can keep our windows closed and then not have the cold air running over our shoulders yep so a lot of people say, if you're not running the air conditioner, why do I need the air conditioning mm -hmm. prep? Well, ventilation is, is key for me. And we found adapting those air conditioning vents was pretty big. Yeah. When, especially when we sleep our heads 
towards the galley end and our feet towards the front of the trailer. The 90 degree elbows are just RV elbows. They click right on. A little piece of bug netting underneath keeps the bugs out and we get plenty of ventilation. We can put one on or we can put both sides on if we want to increase the ventilation. So this weekend we just did one and it was plenty. Yep. So I had that on and the, the fan on low and we had no condensation whatsoever inside the trailer. And I think the big thing with that is um, you're also pulling out all your breathing. People don't realize how much condensation and stuff you get from your breathing. So it's pulling out all that air too and also preventing that buildup of condensation. Yep. So how do we do this? Um, we put a layer of hypervent on the bottom floor of our trailer. So that is giving us a barrier between the flooring and our mattress so that it helps decrease the coldness that we're feeling. Yep, the hypervent is a nice little thin layer. It's got kind of a plasticky um, mesh. mesh texture to it. And basically it has an insulating layer on one side. Um, it's a barrier that allows um, air to flow through and it allows air to move underneath the mattress. That's mm -hmm. basically what hypervent is and it allows that constant airflow so it's going to prevent that moisture from building up between the layers of your mattress and the floor of the trailer. With the Hypervent we have a great company called Mattress Insider. There's a discount code we'll put it down in the description if you guys are interested in Hypervent. Mm -hmm. um, check out the description below save yourself five percent yep. and they will ship it to your house directly. All right and then on top of our Hypervent you need to put a mattress. So we personally have the Millard Trifold mattress. Uh, we know of some people that do the um, X-Ped, um, more of a tenting mattress, but something that you're getting a layer between you and the coldness of the trailer underneath. So that will help keep you warmer. Yep, having a good mattress is key. That Millard six inch foam mattress, it's a very popular model for hiker mm -hmm. trailers or any kind of teardrop small trailer. Um, it provides adequate insulation. You have no issues with it, um, and, and it's it's firm, but it's not too firm. And we thoroughly enjoy it. And have a good night's sleep. It's very key if you're going to be in a small space like this that you have a, a very good night's sleep. I did notice, though, with it being colder, that the mattress seemed firmer until our body heat kind of warmed it up. Then yeah. it seemed to kind of soften up a little bit more. This I would time. say when you first get in there and everything's cold and it's been 30 degrees outside, yes. Mm -hmm. The mattress is going to be a little stiffer until it warms up a little bit. Yep. All right, then it's your body, and then you need to have some warm layers above you. So some people will go with getting a really warm sleeping bag and sleep in that. Other people will do multiple layers of blankets and sheets and go that route to get the layers, have a down comforter or something like that to keep the warmth in. Yep. So if you and your partner like to have the queen mattress traditional setup mm -hmm. and put on a couple of nice thick blankets, that would definitely work between body heat and a small heater running potentially, you're going to stay warm no problem. Yep. So, and then the most obvious thing to keep yourself warm while you're camping is to do a campfire. Campfire is really important guys. If you've got the ability to get some wood and so on, the only downer is you got you got those rainy nights, <laughs> you've got having. getting the fire started, wet wood, um, finding wood potentially if you're off grid. So something to take into consideration. That's where we really like the idea of a Mr. Buddy heater or bringing some kind of small propane heater. Um, it's something instead of a campfire that you can bring into your space. You don't have the smoke issues. Uh, it's instant turn on and instant heat. It'll take care of you no problem. Reflectix. Matt created some um, coverings to put on our windows so that we keep the heat in and the cold out. So Reflectix is a type of material that they use around furnaces and pipes and ventilation systems. And you can get it in a big roll at your local hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's. They all carry Reflectix. There's a Reflectix tape too that is kind of a... Um, a it's got kind of a metal um, adhering layer on it and you can use that to seam seal the sides and what I did is I just cut it to the window shape and then the actual channel that the window slides in you can tape the ends on all four corners and tuck it in there and then I took some small pieces of tape and folded them in half and stuck them to the reflectix so it helps me pop out or pop in the actual panels themselves. 
Now on the other side with the screen, I haven't come up with a perfect option for that. This trip, just because I know I wanted it, we just cut a couple pieces of tape here and there and everywhere. We're, we're toying around the idea of maybe having a few small magnets that we can attach to either side and then these could just literally just magnetize over top of the windows. Or somehow sliding it between the window and the screen. Yeah, so, potentially, but I, a couple I think different that, options. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. But the key there is your windows are your weak link in your trailer. That's where your most heat is going to be lost is through your windows. Mm -hmm. That's just like a typical house or anything else. So by creating an extra layer there, you're trapping air in between the reflectix and the window. You're going to keep that window area a lot more insulated mm -hmm. and it's going to prevent a lot of heat loss. So it's just something we're going to add during cold weather camping time. We can fold the pieces up. We can tuck them away in the truck or in the trailer and remove them in the summertime. We don't need them. And then we can also then throw our curtain over top and then you've even got another layer of the curtain, the reflectix, and then into the window pane. One thing we did talk about was a, a hot drink before bed too. Ah, uh, yes. So, so you can take your traditional turvis and put a hot drink in here. That's mm -hmm. going to be awesome to have just before bed. The other thing is if you're off grid and you want to stay warm, it's an old backpacking tip. <laughs> That you can take a neogene type container a thick walled container put some hot water in it and put it down in the bottom of your sleeping bag and stay toasty warm all night long keep those piggy toes warm yep hopefully you guys got something out of this video yep and if you have any suggestions of what you have found works well for you when you go cold weather camping we'd love to hear your suggestions absolutely let's start a um, discussion down in the comments so go down there if there's something we miss or something we need to think about for staying warm during cold weather camping so like we say every time like share, share and, and subscribe, subscribe. And get, get out, out and do, do some, some camping. camping we'll talk to you next time guys have a good day